had to retake that. Yeah, so this will be a first of a couple, a series of a couple videos I'll be making about uh, the 4TO career field, 4COX1 uh, specifically, medical laboratory technician um, career field in the Air Force. Because I've been in the Air Force for just three years. Um, I can speak a little bit about my experience and what I've found to be um, some challenges as well as some benefits of being in this career field. And so I'm giving you the top five things you need to know before becoming a lab technician. Uh, number one is the most obvious one uh, because you find this out from your recruiter. You, you'll, you'll know right away if you do a little bit of research. This has a 13 month tech school. So you're gonna be in tech school for a very long time. And depending on where you go in tech school, uh, matters a lot. So everyone goes to uh, Fort Sam Houston. So when you finish basic training, you will go to, uh, you'll take a bus, a uh, 30 minute ride to Fort Sam Houston uh in texas so it's like down the road literally from lackland from where you graduate and then you will um from there you'll spend four and a half months in a phase one course where you'll be going over nine chapters uh and this is um the most current information uh i believe they, they are planning to make some changes to the course so this might not apply in the future but as of right now uh you'll be taking nine chap uh, nine books nine chapters different sections so you'll be studying doing book work uh, you'll have labs that you'll do uh, just like a regular college class and you'll have quizzes and then big tests block tests is what they're called and then once you're once you graduate from that if you graduate from that because you do need like a background in chemistry a little bit as well as uh, math to pass that not too hard anyone can do it I did it um, once you pass that, you'll be given a couple different options for your phase two course. And depending on how well you do in your phase one, you may be given preference to the base of your choice for your phase two. And it's really important because you're going to be spending nine months at your phase two location. Your options from when I was in Travis Air Force Base in California, Eglin Air Force Base in Florida, um, Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, uh, Scott in uh, Illinois. Um, you know, you can always go to Lackland. Uh, how many are left? Oh, I went to Luke Air Force Base um, in Arizona. I believe they may have been shut off recently as a Phase Two site, as well as maybe Nellis. Nellis uh, is a bigger hospital. However, I don't know if they got shut off or not. Um, and the other one is off at Air Force Base in Nebraska. Um, some of these bases are bigger and some are smaller. And that matters a lot because having larger facility means that you have more, um, you can actually gain more experience because the busier the lab is, the more experience you're going to have working in large hospitals. So you kind of get the gist of what a high workload is. Versus me who went to Luke Air Force Base where it's much more laid back and it's a smaller base. So we don't get as many samples and we have more time to uh, focus on the on the book work. So with that being said, um, so you have to choose between whether you want to go to a base that's maybe closer to home so you could drive home when you take leave. Or if you um, want to go to a bigger hospital to get more experience. My advice would be to go to a bigger hospital because I actually suffered a lot because I didn't get that that experience in blood bank, that huge experience in um, working with like certain analyzers that I never had experience with. I would have got that experience if I went to a bigger hospital. But anyways, so that's the number one. Very long tech school. Be prepared to plan out your first year in the Air Force in tech school. Second, um, we are certified OCD. So that means that everything you do in the lab, you have to be that type of person who's just really nitpicky and you have to constantly double check and triple check everyone's work, including your own, for mistakes. Because 
the numbers and the decimal points and everything is affecting a patient directly, even if you're not seeing it. So, uh, for example, like entering a result, like if you accidentally put ooh, an extra zero, that could serious uh, that could have a major effect on that person's um, treatment for whatever disease they have. So that is super important that you just double and triple check everything, especially when you're uh, working with other laboratories on a test, like if you're shipping out a sample or something like that. Laboratories need to communicate and they need to communicate like strictly. So, and if you don't, you're gonna have a really bad time um, because they're gonna be coming after you saying, why did you fuck this up? Uh, you don't belong here, whatever. Everyone makes mistakes. Um, when they're in so you're gonna make some mistakes especially when you first start your first couple years um, and then even if you you know you become an NCO you become like a section lead you're still gonna make mistakes and you're gonna be held responsible for your mistakes and you're gonna have to answer for them that's why you should just get into the habit or if you're not already in that habit if you want to do this career field you need to get in the habit of double checking everything and making sure everything is good to go because once you certify a result once you send out a sample once you do anything in a lab it has to be perfect so that's why it's so important number three you're gonna have a pretty nice work environment uh as compared to other career fields where you'll be out in the flight line in the cold the rain you're, you're in an air-conditioned facility at all times so because in the laboratory, the temperature and the climate in the in the lab matters so much that it's actually a necessity that everything stays within certain temperature ranges because if it's not, it can throw off the results of a sample. So you'll always be in a very well air conditioned building and you'll just be chilling. Um, I know like when I pull a call, when I pull a call shift, um, you'll just be sitting back, like running a sample, listening to music. It's really nice, it's really chill. So that's a lot, that's a huge benefit of being in the lab, is that you can kind of, if, if as long as you're good with your work, uh, you can kind of relax. It's a pretty chill work environment and, you know, you don't have to deal with the elements so much. Number four, number four would be um, every, everyone in the hospital uh, looks at the lab almost with disgust because everything that you do affects what they do. So there's the there's like a beef between um, different career fields and the lab because the lab, like you're certified OCD, like I was saying. So if they make a mistake, you cannot like, you have to send it back or something like, let's say for example, a technician brings you a sample and they didn't label it correctly or, or they forgot the order. So now you gotta say, oh, I'm not accepting it. I This is unacceptable. You messed up one small thing, so you're, it's all fucked, right? So that's something that might piss them off, but it's a requirement. It's all about patient safety. That's like the number one thing is like, we want to make sure that the patient's results are getting out properly. So you're always bickering and fighting with these people who are less detail oriented than you, which causes uh, infighting within the hospital. So yeah, um, you won't be treated like, you know, is <laughs> one of them. I mean, you, you, obviously you're going to make like friends in the clinic. I have a lot of friends that are in other career fields, but for the most part, lab is just a huge burden on everyone else because we're so uh we're so like detail oriented and we're so strict about everything that everyone just fucking hates us. So, that's pretty funny. But yeah. Um number 5 is hmm the number five most important thing about this career field is to just know your shit. Like, people are going to come to you with questions about, like, crazy topics. Like, especially when people who go to tech school, you're going to learn about a lot of stuff. And a lot of it's going to go over your head. Like, why, why do we run this chemistry test? Like, what's so important about this test for this patient? And the diseases involved and all that. The doctors usually don't even know the answer. They just kind of, the way it works is like when a doctor orders a test, they're usually just going into a computer and ordering a panel for whatever symptoms the patient is displaying. So 
you knowing your stuff is gonna make you stand out as like you're you're really on it like you know what the hell's going on for example like someone someone presents with like blood clots and they're like the doctor's like what the what the hell do i do they, they got clots in their freaking legs and i was like oh really if you know your stuff if you know what to do like you can help them help the patient obviously you're not you're not a medical provider so you're not authorized to give medical advice however you can uh if you know what to look for and like you know uh the tests and how they work and what they why people run the test understanding the why you're gonna really like stand out people are gonna look look up to you and people are gonna respect you more so like understanding like what each test in the urinalysis is understanding a chemistry panel and all the tests and how, what the methodology is what can affect those samples or whatever like the numbers how they interact with each other especially like looking at blood uh like looking at a blood smear seeing certain patterns if you identify something that the doctor may not understand you're gonna be you're gonna be hot shit in this career field so if, if you're if you're someone who wants to understand why rather than like what and how and who right if you're more interested in the why lab tech is good for you because if you if you're smart if you understand like why everything works the way it does um you're gonna have a really good time in this career field but yeah you have those kind of drawbacks with detail oriented people and all that so yeah those are my top five things like reasons why you'd want to pick this career field or why you wouldn't want to pick this career field like if you're if you're someone that like doesn't really like care just wants to get those benefits and hop out this actually might not be a good career field for you because you're you're given a lot of pressure to understand a lot of material and that's why our tech school is so long so this may not be a career field for you if you're not that person that wants to understand why go into detail about the the like the subject and is a detail oriented person that understands everything then yeah maybe maybe not this career field uh there are other options out there for people like that in medical um for example you have 4a 4 alpha would be the uh, medical admin uh medical logistics um 4n is critically manned so it's really easy to get a 4n job which is basically you're just <laughs> doing errands for the doctors but yeah lab is lab is intense so i would uh reconsider if you don't like anything that i just said so that's all I got for this first part. Um, I'll think of what to make for the second part.